Ripple XRP, so Brad Garlinghouse has dropped this piece of news within a recent interview. And also the European Central Bank has said that Bitcoin has failed in a recent paper. So we're going to be taking a look at that as well as an important event that will be happening in 2024 in London, which is the Digital Asset Summit, and how some people are backing Elizabeth Warren in relation to banning crypto. Of course, we will be looking at the price action for both XRP and XM coin today. So all I ask from you are two things, which is to smash that like button and to subscribe to the channel as well. So over here we have from Good Morning Crypto that Brad Gallinghouse has said he would be welcoming an XRP ETF. Now, as of now, we don't have any sort of rumors of BlackRock or JP Morgan working with Ripple in order to come up with that ETF. But Brad has mentioned that it could be something on the table and that they are open to it. So you would welcome an XRP ETF then? We would certainly welcome it, and I think it's inevitable that there'll be, you know, multiple ETFs around different uh, tokens. I think you'll even see ETFs potentially around baskets that also, I think, further diversify that risk. Uh, are you in talks with the largest issuers, particularly BlackRock, to get this done? Well, uh, I'm not going to comment on that. I know BlackRock has said some things publicly. Uh, you know, w we think it makes sense for the XRP community overall. Uh, you know, Ripple obviously is a very important stakeholder in the XRP ecosystem, but we're not the only player. And look, we, we've seen, I mean, before the SEC lawsuit, XRP was the second most valuable digital asset. I think because of the headwinds of that lawsuit, you know, we've now seen that largely abate. Uh, but the long-term view on these things is about you know how do you create utility and really solve real world problems with these different digital assets i mean even if we do see an etf coming out i don't think that's going to be as huge of a catalyst maybe we might see somewhat of an increase in the price but i don't think that we'll be seeing ten dollar xrp just because of the fact that we'll have an etf and brad has not commented on whether or not they have been in talks with the issuers in terms of the etfs in relation to the blackrock ceo he has also kept it quite quiet too and hasn't really said anything about xrp but there have been a few rumors of that and if anything the largest asset management investment firms like blackrock and jp morgan will most likely be getting into the xrp etf if there ever were to be one but there's a lot of opportunity i mean many other tokens can also be going into an etf as well because we've seen bitcoin and we also have ethereum now that we're gearing up for in april and may for the approvals so after XRP, I think that it will open doors for other tokens to also have the opportunity of the ETF as well. Now in the same interview, Brad was also asked about the SEC and just what is basically going on so far. I mean, we know as of now in terms of February the 20th, that was the extended deadline for Ripple in order for them to provide information to the SEC that they requested. So now we are on the 22nd, so two days have gone by and I'm more than sure that they would have been compliant with it and they would have given the information. So we're just awaiting on the outcome for that and in order for the SEC to review it. But let's take a look at the recent update that he has said about this. Determined that XRP is not in and of itself a security. When do you think that this will finally no longer be an overhang for you guys? You're one of many companies that are fighting the SEC at this point in time. But when can you call this an arc all clear? And do you think that this will make it so far as to reach higher courts? Well, I, I, hard to predict whether it's going to reach out of courts. On everything we cared about, we won against the SEC. Will the SEC appeal and move it up to courts? We'll see. They sought approval to do what's called an interlocutory appeal. The courts denied that also. Uh, the case against me personally and Chris Larson personally was dismissed entirely with prejudice. So, look, from my point of view, the SEC has lost consistently. They lost the Grayscale case. I think if you're following the Coinbase case, that the tone from the judge uh, is, I think, pretty skeptical about some of the SEC's arguments. It stops, I think, when it, uh, the SEC either realizes they're losing consistently, consistently or you have Congress lean in and write new legislation. That's probably going to be hard in election year. Uh, maybe we'll see legislation around stable coins this year, but uh, I'm hopeful and we'll continue to advocate in Washington. So we do know that we have a pretty good position when it comes to the lawsuit case. Ripple have been doing pretty well so far in general. So we'll just have to see what comes out of this as we're heading now towards the end of February. One event that we do have though that is happening in London on March the 18th to March the 20th is the Digital Asset Summit 2024. Over here we have the agenda and you'll see that we have Brad Garlinghouse 
that it will be speaking for 20 minutes in one of the fireside chats. Uh, for some of the topics, you'll see that we have the perspe allocator's perspective on crypto, the rise of stable coins in global finance, the next generation of institutional staking, the case for crypto derivatives, and we also have the seismic shift towards tokenization. All very important topics. And we know that Ripple XRP could be planning to be a stable coin maybe sometime in the future if we do see regulation for that. Over here from Bill Morgan, we have this tweet showing someone saying that we'd like a straight up crypto ban, but a backdoor ban works too. Here to support you in any way to Elizabeth Warren. I'm surprised that there are actually people that really support crypto ban. I mean, I would understand if you have people probably in Congress or any other sort of representative or professional that might want a ban on crypto. But seeing the people actually wanting a crypto ban just goes to show you that they don't really know much about this. Or maybe they are naive because cryptocurrency is one of the ways that it will provide you with freedom and an alternative fiat, fiat currency. So Bill says over here, these are the type of people who support Elizabeth Warren. People who like Senator Warren want to totally ban crypto in the US. It would be interesting to understand what their perspective is on crypto. I mean, if they're only talking about the illicit finance, then we've kind of got some hard facts to say, well, actually, that also happens in fiat currency. But I'm all for crypto. I'm sure a lot of people that watch my channel are also for crypto as well. So it's mind boggling to see someone like that saying that they are against crypto. From the European Central Bank, they made this tweet today saying, that Bitcoin has failed to become a global decentralized digital currency, instead falling victim to fraud and manipulation. And the recent approval of an ETF doesn't change the fact that Bitcoin is costly, slow and inconvenient. Now they might have a few points when it comes to the fact that Bitcoin is costly. And of course it may be inconvenient compared to other networks that we have out there. But this has reached 1.5 million people. And I do think that this is a little bit of FUD because the reason as to why they are talking about Bitcoin in this manner is because of the crime. So they're saying that Bitcoin remains the top choice for money laundering in the digital world, with illicit addresses transferring 23.8 billion in crypto in 2022 and marking a 68% increase from the previous year. They still don't address the fact that fiat currency is probably anywhere from five to 10 times more than that, and Bitcoin is only a small portion. But I'm not quite sure if I'd be taking the European Central Bank's advice on this. I mean, especially with the fact that Bitcoin has been performing quite well so far, we have reached $51,223 in the past month we are up by 27.8% and we were actually trading at $40,000 we have now increased by $12,000 in just a month and it's also important to mention that Bitcoin has been one of the best performing digital assets just over the past 10 to 15 years that it has been created and so I do think that this report is a little bit of a FUD. I think they're trying to paint it with the wrong brush. For XRP's price today you'll see that we are currently trading at 0.5412 and for the volume we are down by 25.33% and we're trading at 1.2 billion dollars so we're seeing a bit of a pullback I mean we did have a little bit of a run throughout the week so in the earlier hours of the morning for today we were trading at 0.5418 and for the seven day chart we are down by 1.69% at the start of the week we were quite nice we were at 0.5757 so just edging towards that 58 cent mark and then we came down to 0.54 5.4 below 55 cents but still pretty high compared to where we were before last month and then we were able to climb up to 0.5737 now we have a trace back we've come down by roughly around about three cents on the one month chart we are up by 8.6 percent so where do i want to see xrp coin go well i want to see some more support at 53 cents and if you can do that head off to the 50 cent level where we were before i mean it was just a bit of a price pump that we had for the past couple of days. For Stellar XLM, we are currently trading at 0.115. On the one day chart, we are up by 2.9%. And on the one month, we are up by 1.8%. We have come down below that 12 cent mark, but still price action is pretty nice considering the fact that we were below 11 cents in the beginning of February. Let's see if we can find a support level at 11 cents or the mid range of 11 cents before we head off to 12 cents again. Guys, if you want daily Ripple XRP and Stellar XLM coin news, subscribe to the channel and like the video as well.